Hello everyone, I am Allison Gonzalez, a Microsoft Certified Trainer here at Pragmatic Works. Welcome to the next episode in my report design series. Today, we're gonna to talk about the very important topic of report structure. How are we putting things on the page and where are we putting on the page and what are we putting on the page? So let's start talking about it. So far in our series, we have concentrated a lot so far on the look and feel of what we are going to be doing with our report. But just as important, if not more important, to our report design is the structure of this. Where are we putting the data? Where are we putting the information? Because it can change the way that that data is interpreted and read and understood and seen based on where you are placing it in your report. Now, good news, bad news. Report design is really a blend of science of what works well with what, as well as art um, and the design aspect of things. So you might be better with one than the other, but you get to combine both of them. We're gonna talk both aspects as we talk about report structure. What really matters the most with our report design is that it effectively communicates the data that meet our requirements. So we have to figure out the people that are requesting this report that are building for us, or if we're building it on our own, what do we wanna see? What is the goal of this report? Once we have that goal, then we can really have a much more educated design process in here. But we all know that a well-designed report will really improve that end user experience and their navigation through that. And as we talk through this, we're gonna see kind of the science behind things and why we would wanna put things in different places inside a report to make it easier to digest and navigate through for our users. So first off, we have placement. Let's get it kicked off with that. So good placement of report objects contributes to a very ordered and structured report design. So generally, you should be placing the most important information up here in that top left corner and then arrange your information kind of left to right and top to bottom because this is how your eyes are going to read. Now, it is important to know if you are um, designing for people who are reading in a language that goes right to left instead of left to right, you would just flip this. You would do the opposite here because if you are ingrained, you're learning how to read, you start reading left to right, you start at the top of the page, you work all the way across, you go back down, you go across, you go back down, you go across. So the same process applies to our report design. Your report readers are going to read and process this information the same way. The quicker that they can process the information, the easier it's gonna be for them to engage with it, retain it, understand it, communicate feedback, all of that good stuff. The next part is alignment. So uh, when we're putting our elements on the page, the, the visuals that we're choosing, we wanna make sure that vertically, horizontally, we have the same amount of space around them. We want it to look ordered, pleasing to the eye without being like right on top of each other. Give everything a little bit of margin, give everything a little group. We kind of see this rule of thirds structure in here where we're able to essentially have a grid. This is very pleasing to the eye. A lot of time you'll look at photography tutorials and they'll just tell you, you know, put that grid on your phone when you're taking the picture. You'll see this grid and you'll see where you can structure your elements inside of that grid because universally it is just very helpful to see that. So having an ordered report layout creates this connection between your visual elements. You can really make sure you're not cluttering up with too much stuff and putting, you know, random things all over the place. Um, also, having a good structure gives you like some energy and some movement between the things rather than more of a clutter and confusion. So rule of thirds can make sure that you make use of your report canvas space in the best way possible. So kind of some good things to think about over like, okay, well, I'll use rule of thirds, but what are we putting in what place? Remember, we're thinking top all the way across to the bottom. So that top one is your most important. And in that top, this is where you put those high level visuals like uh, gauges, KPIs, 
um, and you're gonna keep it up in that top easy to see thing. So very important ones that you're tracking and looking at those metrics. You don't wanna bury them in the middle of the page, the bottom of the page, keep them at the top. The middle of our dashboard, this is where we have more trend-based and activity-based and visuals that demonstrate kind of data over time. It's where we can fit those larger visuals. So a lot of times we'll see in the top of our reports, we'll have, you know, some more slices, we'll have more cards, we'll have those smaller things at the top. In the middle, we have some larger ones. And then at the bottom, again, we can see more granular ones, which again, could be really specific KPIs, tables, but again, keeping this to a really small amount of elements on your page. So here's like an example of a report structure you could think of. So in here we have three evenly spaced sections. You can have your most important information, of course going left to right. Inside of these threes, you could break this down into, you know, you could just have one here, you could maybe have two here, you could just have one here, or maybe you have those broken up so you really do have three areas across the top. Just matters on how many visuals you're putting on the page, which we're gonna talk about very soon. You would also wanna keep your navigation into the left area because that's where we're inclined to look for navigation and the right. We wanna go with your users natural behaviors. How have they been trained over time to interact with things? If we think of a website, our website navigation is going to be a lot of times our home button. It's going to be our logo. That logo is normally in the top left corner. So we can see we've got our logo up in that placement um, and that logo can often link back to your home or a certain uh, bookmark that you have placed in there. You could put other additional um, bookmark links and things at the top or in the side to navigate through as you need to. Another important consideration when you're laying out report objects is balance. So this is more concerned with the uh, stability and the structure in design. So balance refers to the weight that is distributed across your report page by your placements. So you can either lean into that and have something be very symmetrical, how our last one had three very organized sections, or we could have asymmetrical balance and that contrast would draw your eye to that asymmetry. So you would see where something is different or where that is you know, not what you would expect it to be. That's gonna catch your eye. So we can practice using the golden ratio as a guide to produce asymmetrical balance because again, we don't want it to be confusingly off balance. We want it to be still structured and purposeful, but intentional with where we are asymmetrically placing these things. Now the Fibonacci sequence, and it is where two quantities are in the golden ratio if the ratio is the same as a ratio of their sum to the larger of the quantities. So we can see how the elements are fitting together and moving in this nice little kind of like snail shell shape. This has been used for so long um, in art and in architecture. This You'll see this kind of image overlaid over so many classic pieces of artwork because it has been done with this golden ratio. Pretty sure it came around a Renaissance-esque era, something around there. Um, and it still applies to how we see and how something looks nice in our brain and connects into us. You can also have it this direction as well. And this one, honestly, I will say probably works a little bit better for our report design because we're making use of that top left corner where we have our eyes just naturally starting there. We're putting some things there that are smaller, important, um, and we're moving around our page in there. So both kind of directions work for the golden ratio, but if you're going for an asymmetrical look, this is a good way to keep that organized. We then have gestalt principles. So this is another way we can kind of understand how our brain sees and interacts with things. This was actually uncovered by a German psychologist um, and it's made up of these different principles, which we have proximity, so how close things are to each other will make them seem related. The similarity, if we have the same background on things or they're, um, you know, the same amount of stuff, they just look really similar, we're going to associate those together. Closure is a good one. This is cool because our brain just automatically thinks, like with this G right here, it's going to close that space. It's gonna see that even though there's negative space, um, it's going to match that up. 
We also have quadrants, so dividing things and fitting them into a grid. We have continuation, so if an arrow is moving a certain way, our brain is going to continue to see the arrow moving that direction, and we can use that to our benefit, especially if we are essentially forecasting, showing something in the future, we would make sure we have visuals that would show continuation, which would, instead of a bar chart, a line chart would more likely show what could the trends to continue, which hopefully would be an upward trend, if it's a good thing. Um, and then we also have figure and grounds. So I think we've all seen those really funny pictures where, you know, you have like a vase in the front, but then you realize, oh, wait, the background, that is two faces looking at each other. So you can decide, hey, the figure, that's your more front item and your ground, which is the more back item, you want to make sure that those are playing well together. That's why it really ties into having really good borders around things, keeping things organized, because that will stand out. If you have weird different margins in places, that will stand out and look strange and kind of catch people's eye in not the best way. Now, I also want you to have consistency. So. This, of course, I was gonna like just say it goes without saying. We don't need to put it, but I do have it in here because I wanna make sure, one, you're sticking with your color palette that we talked about putting in there. Stick with those colors. Anything that goes out of that, that is gonna stand out. That's gonna draw people's eye and probably not necessarily in a great way. Also, it goes into your data. Keep your naming structure the same. Keep the formatting in that your team is gonna understand. You know, with your dates and your times and currency, all that stuff, Make sure you're sticking with that all throughout. It's a really nitty gritty little thing, but it plays a really big part because I'll so often see reports that seem chaotic because they don't have those little things and just a lot going on. Even if they have a good structure, the reports or the visuals that they chose are good for the data because they have just random colors going on in places. There's not really a lot of consistency between this type of visual or this type of data has these colors or these elements to it, it can just be confusing and uh, just harder to understand. Also, what is the point of this report? This probably could have been our first thing we think of, but we want to make sure that we are sticking with a topic per page of our report. Remember, with our report, we can have multiple pages. It's in a dashboard. We can have multiple pages. So we want to keep the same topic to the same page. So you want to avoid combining subjects. Also avoid cluttering that report. So keep, you know, six to 10 data points on a page. So split it up. You don't need to think of all of your data for the entire report all together on one page. Instead, group the like subject matter together that you're like, all right, everyone's going to want to see this visual together, this day together, this day together. Space that out so it's easy to understand that it is well structured as you move through. And of course, less is more. So always keep in mind that this less is more adage applies to your report design, the structure, the labeling, the colors, all of those things are going to benefit by you kind of restraining yourself and really just thinking, do I need to do this? And in fact, can I take or should I take anything away? So that is the basics of report design related to the structure of how you are organizing your data on the page as well as some good art design tips thrown in through there to make sure that as you're going through this series, you're really understanding the basics of, all right, we've got our colors, we've got our data, now how are we actually going to start putting this data into visuals on our page? How are we going to lay this out? this is informative for you and you might be already starting to go back tweak some of your existing report designs with these principles in mind and i'm very excited because in our next episode we're going to be getting into our report builds so we're going to be going through the whole entire process we're going to get some data we're going to get some inspiration we're going to pick our color palettes we are going to think of our report structure and then we're going to build our report out so 
finally gotten through that. We've really got through the basics already with this series, and now we're gonna get into the fun work of actually designing some reports together here. So make sure that you are subscribed so you will see one of the latest episodes in this series, as well as all of the series of videos here on our Pragmatic Works channel come out. We have videos coming out normally three to four times a week, all about the Power Platform. I will see you all in the next video. Happy report designing.